What surprised me most when I entered Greenpeace for the first time was I expected to see you know more people who look like me with long beards and the image of sort of hippie activists dressed in a particular way, looking in a particular way and so on. And actually what I found were scientists, intellectuals, some of the best communications people I've ever come across in my life of any sector. Uh, but importantly, I also found people from the business community. And all of that has surprised me, but also inspired me to actually see that Greenpeace does have the ability to attract people who are willing to leave senior jobs in government or senior jobs in business. So where we draw our people from is not just the environmental movement or the NGO movement more broadly, but it's being drawn from everywhere. Then in terms of technical skills, I mean, I think in many, many areas, we have some of the most talented people I've come across. Whether it is the folks that organize our actions, the folks that sail our three ships, or the folks that do our cutting edge communications and creative campaign plans and so on. So today I think the typical Greenpeace person, insofar as one can try to define that, would be somebody who is conscious about how in fact time is so fast running out that we are already getting close to the tipping point for runaway catastrophic climate change and who is willing to make sacrifices to put their lives on the line and to actually take the action that is needed to protect this planet and to secure our children and future generations' futures. Um, I think it's important that what, we've, what I found must be maintained in the sense that you want to have the right balance between professionalism, scientific prowess, research capability on the one end, but you also want to have vibrancy, passion, innovation, flexibility, and finding the right balance between those two is what I consider to be one of the biggest challenges of leadership.